Hi there, very warm welcome along to this video series on ShaperBox 2 from Cable Guys. My name is Larry Holcomb and I'm going to be delivering this video series for you. Now ShaperBox 2 is a flexible effects rack which allows you to choose from up to six modules which can be placed in a chain allowing the output of one to feed the input of the next. And we can use this to create kind of wild effects chains and really bring sounds to life. Now these can be bought individually or if you buy ShaperBox 2 bundle you obviously have all the modules available to you. Now at the heart of Cable Guys plugins is the editable LFO that we see in the middle of the interface. Now this means you can actually draw in and use these preset shapes to create your own custom LFOs. And that's really where the power lies within the Cable Guys plugins. So in this first video we're just going to have a little brief overview of each one of the modules and also talk about how we can interact with the preset section. Now just a word on the music we're going to be using. So we're going to start off looking at this track here. Now just so you know, this is a track I made in Logic, kind of generatively. So I used lots of the MIDI effects plugins in Logic to actually create parameters that allow Logic to actually kind of make the music itself. So I'll just give you a brief little listen. Okay, so you get the picture. So this is kind of perfect to allow us to show off the capabilities of ShaperBox 2. Now I'm also going to use another track that I made for a video series producing electronic music in Logic and also a producing techno track I made a little while back as well. So we're going to have three different pieces of music to demonstrate this plugin suite. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can load in our modules and then also go on to a little overview of what each one can do. Now when we open ShaperBox 2, you can see we have the modules that we can access right in front of us. And to add one into the chain, all we need to do is click on it. Now this will add it in in its default state. To take it out again, we can use this little cross here. But we also have these useful little presets that we can use just to quickly load in a preset for that module. Now I've got this on the master of the track, so we can actually quickly audition what it's doing. got a scratch there and a stutter effect so those are quite useful to enable you to quickly dial in the sound that you know you want and we can also just quickly add in all the shapers like so if we know we want to have a full chain okay now I'm just going to come down to my presets and choose this initialize patch which is going to take everything out of the chain now if we have a couple of different modules loaded you can see that once I've loaded a module here I can use this plus button to load in a new one. We can drag them around from here to choose the order we want, which is very, very important because do we want a filtered sound which is then widened or do we want a widened sound which is filtered? It's going to be two different effects. Sometimes it might sound the same, sometimes it might be different. Now if we want to load up one of the shapers to edit, all we need to do is click on it from here as well. Now when we're changing parameters, we can just click and drag left and right like so. Or for fine increments, we can hold down shift and drag left and right. Now, as I said, at the heart of ShaperBox 2 is this editable LFO, which is accessible from each one of our modules. And we can actually go in and kind of draw exactly what we're looking for with this LFO, which is really, really powerful. And we're going to have a look at this later on. I'm going to demonstrate how you can get exactly what you're looking for with the LFO. Okay, so let's just take off Width Shaper and we'll stick with the filter. Now our filter pan and Width Shapers also have envelope followers on the end here and that allows us to have parameters be affected by the signal coming in. So let's switch this on for Filter Shaper and we'll bring the cutoff down. And you'll hear that we set the threshold to be affecting the kick drum, which is the loudest peak. Let's increase the depth.
you can hear now clearly that the envelope follower is causing the filter to react to the drums, especially the kick drum in the track. Now as well as this envelope follower, the volume shaper also has a compressor on the end of it as well. So we can really dial in the transient response we want. Now for each one of our modules, we have these presets down here for the LFO. So if we just want to quickly dial in a vibe for the LFO, we can do so from here. Let's just switch off the filter for a second. Pretty cool. Now something else which is really powerful within this suite is the ability to add in these effects on a band by band basis. So up in this top left hand corner we have this little multiband display. If I click and drag the handles out, you can see that we can create multiple bands here. Essentially we have one for bass, one for middle, and one for high. And if we click on these bands, you'll see that we actually can have a dedicated setting for each one of these three bands. Pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so that was an overview of the kind of ethos of the plugin. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of each one of the modules and demonstrate its function using some of the presets. So let's first of all reinitialize. Okay, so let's go left to right. So time allows us to store the incoming audio in a buffer and then we can scrub forwards and backwards through the buffer in real time based on the LFO. So this allows us to basically create time effects as the name would suggest. Now let's click on our presets here and you can see down here we can actually choose to only display presets for each one of our shapers. So let's try a couple of these out. So we can page across here as well. So we've got kind of tape stop effects. Let's have a look at this last one. They're all on its own. Really nice flanges. Half time effects. It's pretty insanely good quality for a half time effect, that is. Okay, let's switch off the time module. And next up we have the crush module. Now as you can see from the description it gives us lo-fi bit crush vibes and hi-fi mix enhancement. So let's go to our presets again. Let's try some crush presets. Pretty cool, so nice bit crush style effects. And next up we have our filter, which is a three band multi-mode filter. Let's try some settings out for this. We've got some cool kind of phasey filter effects. Now this is a pan based effect, so it allows us to create auto pan kind of effects. Okay. Let's take that off. And we have volume shaper. Now this is our kind of side chain effect, so we can pump the volume according to the LFO shape. Great for ducking effects. Let's try some of these. Now 
something else I use this for is to actually chop up loops as well to kind of get bits out of loops that I want to hear and take out things that I don't want to hear. And also transcates, things like that. Okay, so finally we have this width shaper here. Now width shaper allows us to modulate the stereo width of an audio signal, again based on the LFA waveform. Now how this works is it actually modulates the side signal of the mid-side mix, so we never have any mono compatibility issues. Let's dive in and choose some presets for this. Okay, so now we've got an overview of what ShaperBox 2 is all about. We know the ethos of the plugin, we know how to load in modules, we know that we've got a user editable LFO at the heart of each one of the modules, and we have an overview of what each module is able to do and how we can select presets for each one of those modules. And now we've covered that, in the next video we're going to dive in and have a look at the presets section in a little bit more detail.